when you look at current struggles, projects, you know, it could be the dark side is, you know, a very recent example, but it could be many others. And you compare it to maybe what was the equivalent when you were trying to climb your first V5. How do those experiences relate? They're different for sure. I mean, I think I was less patient when I was younger. And so, um, you know, when I would struggle to do my first V5, it felt like it was taking forever, but it was probably, you know, like the course of like, you know, a month, a couple months of work to like get it, you know? And it was like, so, but at the time you've only been climbing for maybe a year at that time. And it, a couple months feels like an eternity in terms of like the work that you've put in. Um, whereas now it's like, I've been climbing for 22 years, 23 years. And, you know, if I dig into something for multiple years, it, it just, it doesn't feel like that much in the context of like all the effort that I've put into climbing over time. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, the way that you approach it is probably similar in some ways, um, in terms of like the motivation and willpower and stuff, but there's obviously a lot more strategy and, um, preparation and, um, you know, with longer term, um, battles, you know, you're, you're going to have, you're going to go through more cycles of like up and down motivation and like questioning yourself than you do, um, you know, earlier on in your climbing. But I think maybe just the later ones are just more drawn out, but it's a similar like cycle where you're like, you have a breakthrough and then you start and then, you know, you get stuck and then you start questioning yourself and then you're kind of in the dumps about it. And then you, and then you have like another little, you keep trying and you have another little breakthrough and you kind of bump up a little higher on it and get a little closer. And then you kind of go back down again. It, it's the same process, you know, that we deal with later on. It's just, I think now it's, um, yeah, there's just less room for error now, you know, on the harder end of the scale. Like you just, you have a little bit less, um, like give, but it's, it's the same, you know? And that's the cool thing I've always found about climbing is that, and I tell people this in the gym all the time that are new to climbing is that w whether I'm climbing V15 or, you know, climbing, you're climbing this, your first V2, we're on the same journey here, you know? And it, it doesn't change in that way. It's just, you know, I'm a little bit further down the line, you know, in terms of like what I'm trying and maybe more people are, have gotten through this kind of level that you're at, but that doesn't change your experience with it. You know, you should dig into it in the same way and appreciate your progress and experience with it in the same way that I would experience it on the, on the harder end of the scale. And so I think it's a good reminder for people to just realize that in climbing, we're all the same in terms of how we, you know, how we battle with our projects and do that stuff. And there's no more value in what I'm doing on the harder end of the scale, I think, than what someone's doing on the easier end, because it's all just a personal journey of trying to master this, you know, very odd thing that we do, you know, so. Yeah, I love it. It's such good perspective. And I think that only somebody who's been on that journey to the point where you are, you know, is able to look back and, and really have that real perspective, that real reflection, because you have to go through the V ones and twos and threes and fours to get to where you're going but it just it, it always feels like when we look at like the elite the highest level climbers it, that it's just like almost like a different sport but it's just incremental right yeah. you know and I, I tell my kids that with they're in guitar lesson and piano lessons and like you just you know you you gotta pay your dues in yeah. the beginning and then and then with that becomes mastery and with mastery can can come ease uh at least to some extent which um Oftentimes when I see somebody like yourself climbing, it looks very easy. It looks very fluid, uh, but a lot of work goes into getting there, of course. For sure. I mean, that's, that also is an, I mean, an incredible part of like spending a lot of time working on a sp specific activity or, you know, a movement is that there is this crazy feeling that comes when you've like mastered movement to some degree. And all right, y'all, quick shout out for today's sponsor, which is Rungni Magnus Mitbo's company. And man, they got my favorite product back in stock, Mag Juice. I didn't come up with the name of it, but I love it anyway. Mag Juice is liquid chalk. And in these hot months, you guys, I need all the extra help I can get to keep my hands dry. Mag Juice is going to keep your hands chalky and dry for much longer than just using regular loose chalk. That means you can chalk up less often, which means you can hang on to the wall a little bit longer. That's been my experience with it. I think you're going to love it too. Man, I love the whole line of chalk there. I love their chalk ball. I love their loose chalk. 
And man, do I love that juicy, juicy mag juice. You guys can score 15% off some mag juice as well as everything else over at Rungni. I love their apparel. I love everything by using code STRUGGLE at that link right there. I think that I didn't realize what that could feel like until I got there. I think it was maybe after 10 or 12 years of climbing that I, I hit this point where I like, like on my good days, it felt like this effortless flow. Like my body was just, I didn't have to think about anything. It just knew exactly how to move and react and, and, you know, in every position and everything that I was doing. And, um, that, that feeling, you know, I'm, I feel like now I'm still trying to like chase that feeling now that I know what it felt like. And it gets harder and harder as you get older (laughs) to like, to like hold on to that. But, um, that I think I didn't know that I could feel that way early on. And so it was not something that I was like driving towards. It was more just kind of like, I want to get better at this. But then once I felt that it was, um, it's hard to let go of it. You know, it's it, cause you really just want to feel that way all the time. And, um, and then you're constantly kind of chasing it from, from then on out. But it's a cool thing because it, it feels like it's almost this reward for all the effort put in. And I never thought of like achieving a specific goal as like a reward for all that work. Like it wasn't like, oh, now that I've climbed V15 or V16, that's the reward for putting all the work in. For me, the reward always was like this ability to move on the rock really effortlessly and to just feel like perfectly at peace with like everything that I was doing on rock. And it was, that was the most like just addicting, amazing feeling, you know? And, and I still get it from time to time. I'll go in the gym and I'll just have this like perfect flow session. And I'm just like, holy shit, this is like, I just take, I would take this day over any send of any project to just feel like that effortless flow, you know? So. Oh man. Yes. And, and flow you do, my dude. I mean, like, (laughs) it's just, when I think of flow, I think of, of Carlo. So uh, I'm I'm excited, you know, we break this into some, some chapters here. Uh, and and um, we'll probably loop back to to flow and certainly movement and technique, uh, um, an area I know of particular passion of yours, but also of, of mastery. Uh, but first, let's geek out over training. Yeah. And um, I think this is going to be an interesting one with you because you've got some some maybe counter perspectives um, compared to a lot of the athletes that I've that I've talked to here. But I won't um, I won't load the question here. First, first I'll start off where I always do with yeah. the struggle and and. <laughs> Where has training been a struggle for you or where is it a struggle currently even? I'm not the most, this is a hard one for me to answer. I'm, I'd say I'm not the most disciplined at training, but I think that I'm an extremely disciplined climber and I'm very intentional with my climbing practice. But the way that we look at training nowadays is in the context of like, exercises that are done to like help your, you know, your climbing on the wall. And, and a lot of training now is thought of all as off the wall. And that has never been, you know, not, it's never been anything that I've like really dug into with any seriousness. Like I've, I've definitely had a, a program that I would follow that was some off the wall stuff that would keep me kind of in certain shape or kind of push me in a direction that I wanted to go. But, um, I've, I've, I guess I've, I've leaned mostly on just on the wall training most of the time. And I've found that, you know, because I've had access, um, and time to be able to be on the wall a a lot, um, it's made it easier for me to just kind of prioritize just climbing, um, and, and movement as opposed to like, you know, something else like weights or hangboards or, you know, other tools. 